I'm Steve Mann and this is Paper Classroom. Welcome. In this uh, history section we're just going to have a little talk about uh, fibre structure just to let you know about the difference between different types of fibre. There are long fibres maybe up to 8 or 12 millimetres long. There are short fibres something like 1.1 millimetre long for asparto grass. There are narrow fibres, maybe only 89 microns wide, and there are wide fibres, which are the softwoods, probably up to uh, 40 microns. So fibres come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. By far the most common fibres used in paper making are wood fibres, and wood can essentially be divided into either hardwoods or softwoods. For the biologists, they talk about monocotyledons and dicotyledons, but as paper makers, we'll keep it simple. We've got hardwoods and softwoods. Hardwood fibres are typically short and narrow, maybe up to two millimetres ish, uh, long and about 18, 20 microns wide. So here in this slide, we can see these hardwood fibres. This thing here is called a vessel cell or a vessel element. You don't get those in softwood fibres, you only get them in hardwood fibres. And by looking at those vessel cells, you can actually tell what the tree is that it comes from. It's the best diagnostic tool for working out what sort of fibre you're dealing with. So other than uh, hardwoods, we have softwoods. Softwoods uh, are the conifers because the tree, as you can see there, is, is cone shaped. We're talking about things like pine, fir and spruce. Uh, typical softwood fibre is up to about four millimetres long, twice the size of the hardwood fibre and up to about 40 microns wide. So about twice as wide as the hardwood fibre. You can't see it very clearly at the moment, but there are some small little markings on those cells. If we uh, just home in on that, you can see it more clearly now. So on this fibre here, these are known as pit cells or uh, window cells. The colours are all to do with staining. Uh, you use iodine-based stains and you can tell uh, things about different types of fibre or the pulping process that produce those fibre. Again, that's something for the future. And as well as wood fibres, there are also so-called non-wood fibres or annual crops. And these are things that you typically plant and harvest within a year. This one particular example I've given here is abaca. Um, Abacum comes from the Philippines, particularly uh, around the Manila area. And these are extremely long fibres, and these are the these are the must-have fibres for making things like tea bags. You know, a typical tea bag is only what 12, 14 grams per square meter. So it's very light. So in order to be able to carry that sheet through a paper machine, you need very long fibres for the strength. Abaca fibres are absolutely ideal for that. There are many other uh, annual plants, you know, straw, ramy, sisal, jute, flax, hemp, cotton, to name just a few, bagasse. So there's a whole range of fibres for the paper maker to choose from. Does he want a non-wood fibre or a wood fibre? Does he need long fibres for strength or short fibres for what we call formation or appearance? This is just an illustration of the effect of fibre length. If you look at the diagram on the left, we have half a dozen long fibres. These fibres have multiple crossovers and that will give you a strong sheet. But if you look, there are areas here where there are lots of fibre and there are areas here where there's very little fibre. So if you were to hold this up to the light, you'd see a very patchy, blotchy, uneven sheet. So you would say that sheet had poor formation. Over here, we've taken <clears throat> these six fibres, chopped each one down into smaller fibres. If you make a piece of paper from that, 
lovely and even. Hold that up to the light, you'll see a nice even piece of paper. You'd say it had good formation. But you know, there's hardly any crossovers there. So it'll give you a very weak sheet of paper. So this is one of the things that the paper maker needs to juggle. Strength versus appearance. How strong does it want to be? How much appearance is he willing to sacrifice? How good does he want it to be? How much strength is he willing to sacrifice? Again, we'll talk more about that when we do um, tutorials on stock preparation. Just to finish off with a couple of tables, uh, here's some various uh, plant sources. So coniferous trees, the softwoods, deciduous trees, the hardwoods, and a range of non-wood fibres. So wheat straw, asparto grass, flax, abaca and cotton. And you can see average fibre lengths. Softwoods around four-ish, hardwoods around two-ish. Esparto is well known as being the shortest of all the fibres, 1.1 uh, millimetre. Abaca, that's an average of six, but it can actually be anywhere up to 12 millimetres. Cotton, we're really here talking about what you call cotton linters. So they grow the cotton plant, they take off the long fibres from the cotton ball to spin into thread to make clothing. And the material that's left, cotton linters, has an average fibre length of about 8 millimetres, and that's what the paper makers buy. And then the final um, table to look at for the moment is just to look at four fibres, a hardwood fibre, a softwood fibre, cotton and straw, just to look at their brief chemical composition. Again, we'll talk about this later, but fibres have five broad chemical components. Cellulose, hemicellulose and lignin, which we see there. Extractives and ash. But these are the three dominating ones. As you can see, uh, cotton has by far the most cellulose content, you know, almost 100%, up to 96%, and virtually no lignin. And this is one of the reasons why cotton is one of the most durable of all fibres. And throughout this course, these are two words I want you to link inextricably. Whenever you think of cotton, you think of durability. When you think of a durable fibre, you automatically think of cotton. And this is why things like money and check root paper are made usually from 100% cotton or, or almost 100% cotton. Straw, as you can see there, up to about 40% cellulose. The interesting thing, and quite high-ish lignin, 15 to 28%, but the reason that everyone wants to use straw is the hemicellulose content, 35 to 48%. Now, hemicellulose is a soluble material that will assist fibre-fibre bonding and give you a stronger sheet. And that's what everybody usually wants, a stronger sheet. So this very high level of hemicellulose is what uh, draws people into wanting to use straw. But if I said previously in an earlier video, straw has some really big problems because it contains high levels of silica. And silica makes it very, very difficult to dewater the fibre. And once you have made a sheet of paper from it, it makes it extremely abrasive. The other thing to note is that uh, with hardwoods, hardwoods contain relatively less lignin than softwoods. Softwoods are the high lignin content, trees, hardwoods are the low lignin content. And this is why we only use softwoods for mechanical pulping. The idea of mechanical pulping is to really get the whole tree or wood chip hot. That will soften the lignin and then you can rip them apart. There's not enough lignin to really do that in hardwood trees. Well, once again, we come to the end of this short tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. Please enjoy our other videos, and thank you for your time and attention.